$5,000. Because I think that the whole future of blockchain is going to revolutionize the way we do business. Hello guys, so we are now at uh, Money 2020 conference in Amsterdam and uh, we are here just after the panel on CBDC and uh, the launch of uh, the first pilot of uh, digital selling. And uh, we are here with uh, Lord uh, St. Anthony uh, de Jones uh, de Bletcher, uh, the member of uh, the House of the Lords. Nice uh, to meet you here, Anthony. My pleasure. It's very nice meeting you. Uh, so can you tell us about uh, your background and how are you involved in, uh, in uh, I know you talk uh, a lot about innovations and new technologies and as well during the panel you mentioned that you, you even bought two bitcoins. Yeah. So <laughs> can you tell more about your involvement in uh, this uh, new pilot project? Yeah, so I've been in the House of Lords, believe it or not, since 1979, um, the year that Margaret Thatcher took her seat. Uh, and over the years, my involvement has been mostly in foreign affairs, but over the last 15 years, more in disruptive technologies. And I sit on the House of Lords Select Committee on Artificial Intelligence, and Machine mm -hmm. Learning and Robotics. And I was part of the European Union Select Committee looking at European enlargement. Uh, I think it's tragic that the UK has left the European Union, by the way. I <laughs> <laughs> just arrived today and I think having to wait in the queues. But my main focus over the last 15 years has been in disruptive technologies, where we can see central, you know, see central bank digital currencies, mm -hmm. how we can provide a more inclusive society. Um, I should add that I'm a crossbencher, so I don't know when you were last in our parliament, but unlike in the House of Commons where you have obviously the government and the opposition, mm -hmm. in the House of Lords you have a group of us called the crossbenchers, which means I'm strictly in de dependent. So um, the real difference between the House of Lords and the House of Commons, you win votes in the House of Commons, in the House mm -hmm. of Lords you win arguments. And I think what we're trying to do in the House of Lords, particularly in this conference, is advance how the UK can be at the forefront of FinTech, because financial technology and the way the world is moving from traditional banking into a more inclusive society is of pivotal importance to many young people. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think this has been the most fantastic opportunity. Sadly, I've only been here today, but you've been here presumably for the whole co conference. Yeah, and so do you uh, take uh, experience of other countries on the development of uh, CBDCs? Uh, do you talk well, with uh, that's representatives a that's of a other very governments? That's a very good question. And on the panel, we spoke about China, and China's mm -hmm. been working since 2014 on how they can take central bank digital currency into their system. Obviously, uh, it's a very different environment in the UK uh, and the concerns of privacy come into form. We feel that CBDCs, it's not a matter of when, it's not of if, it's a matter of when. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. And I think that the UK is still the feeling that CBDCs are, are, are not going to come in as of now. I think in terms of the retail market, it's going to come in in an evolutionary way. But your question is well taken. We need to be working in a cooperative way with other governments and central banks around the world, learning from them what we can and what we shouldn't be doing. But I think as just much as we look at the advantages, we have to look at the risks. And the UK tends to be very risk averse, where we mm -hmm. respect privacy, we respect the whole issue of identity. I think one of the challenges which we have to embrace now, particularly as we have an ever more growing young population, is digital ID. And I think digital ID is going to become really a centrifugal force. We spoke about Web 2, and mm -hmm. that was all Amazon and Facebook. We're now moving into Web 3, which is all, course, all about decentralized finance. Mm -hmm. That's going to become interesting, but I think lessons have been learned and have to be learned from the past. And where I think your question is well taken, is we cannot operate in a standalone capacity in the UK. We have to work with other governments around the world so that we can create solutions for the long term. And one of the things that I would finally add, I'm sorry, when you ask a politician mm -hmm. a question, they'll answer what they want to say, is <laughs> that I think the challenge is not so much the financial inclusion mm -hmm. as climate change. I think climate change is a massively big issue which we all have to address. COP26 this year was a disaster. And I think all institutions have to embrace ESG. 
And you mentioned digital passports. Uh, Ukraine issues uh, digital passports, so maybe you can uh, take uh, experience from Ukrainian government on uh, well, very the much. UK. My thoughts and prayers with those in the Ukraine. I think it's an extraordinary, challenging time for everyone yeah. in the Ukraine, and our thoughts and prayers go up that hopefully we can see some resolution to what has been a most horrendous situation, and uh, we hope. Yeah, hopefully. And as well, this new ERA project is specifically focused on uh, retail payments. Uh, will it work for businesses and for institutionals as well? Well, I think it's more likely going to be working for businesses first and then retail later. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're going to be seeing an evolution of the retail market coming through into the solution pattern, but I think it's not going to be in the short term. The fact that China took from 2014 to 2022 to bring in their own digital currency I think now in the UK, it's going to happen, but I think it'd be more likely to happen with businesses first and then the retail traffic thereafter. And uh, as well, a lot of people have uh, concerns in terms of privacy for the use and future of uh, CBDCs because like, basically government can track uh, all the uh, payments and spans, like uh, you to uh, told that there is advantage on tracking taxes and uh, raising taxes uh, from the citizens. Uh, but as well, like uh, a lot of people prefer to be uh, uh, private ones and uh, don't uh, uh, and uh, don't show to the government what they spend for. So how how is this issue gonna be? I think that's an excellent question, and I don't see digital currencies replacing cash. I think cash mm -hmm. will always remain a store of value, but I think that cash and digital currencies will all be in time working in concert, but the nub of the issue is privacy. And you don't want to be in a situation where you have Big Daddy in a kind of a, <laughs> in a nanny state, seeing what you spend, how you spend mm -hmm. it. That's not what we're looking for. You know, we have to protect human rights, we have to protect privacy, we have to protect individuals, and we cannot have a situation by diktat where we're forced upon to take on a digital currency which is going to take away people's rights. That said, I'm in favor of a digital ID. I think mm -hmm. we need to move to digital ID for transparency in voting, for in so many different ways, for healthcare, for example. You have a digital ID, you can fall ill anywhere in the world, and your records are kept in terms of your digital mm -hmm. ID. And I think that is in terms of, we know the focus of today has been in FinTech, but health tech is also a massively important issue. Yeah, and uh, how many years uh, do you think it will take for the mass adoption of uh, CBDCs? Well, how long is a piece of string? You know, <laughs> you have the correlation between developed markets and mm -hmm. developing markets. I think it will take a lot longer in developing markets for it to be embraced. But I think that it's, I would say, on average between five and ten years would be, mm -hmm. and I'm literally, I'm putting my thumb, <laughs> I'm blowing in the air because I don't have that answer. Yeah, and I'd like to put it to you in terms of where we stand with stablecoin, cryptocurrencies, the whole evolution of the process. When and if do you think that CBDCs will be fully embraced in the UK? Well, I think um, if you look at the Bank of England uh, statement itself, and we don't have five minutes, so I'll be very quick. Um, they, are, they are saying it's the second half of this decade around CBDC implementation. And I think that's the right approach. We need to be very, very thoughtful, thorough, structured in the way we roll out a retail CBDC because it's a significant shift towards the future of money. And I do think um, current forms of money, fiat, cash, other forms of digital currency, they will all coexist. And that's the thing we need to solve for. So is it how does retail CBDC interoperate, coexist with existing infrastructures, with existing forms of money, to make sure the objectives that we've outlined on this panel get fulfilled. Mm, thank you. Anyone else on the panel would like to? Yeah, and so the last uh, question I asked as well before, what are your thoughts on uh, the adoption of uh, Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies as legal tender, like for example by El Salvador or city of Lugano in Switzerland? Well, I think that when it comes to Bitcoin, 
it's a very volatile currency and it's not necessarily a store of value. I personally think that it will be embraced more mm -hmm. and more as time goes on, but it needs to be regulated. It needs, there's a lot of reputational risk when it comes to Bitcoin. But I think in, in time, it's an education process and there's more and more people who understand the importance of blockchain, understand the transparency aspects, mm -hmm. understand this is not dealing in the dark web, this is totally in open. You know, I'm very proud of the fact that I bought mm -hmm. two Bitcoin. The fact that they are a lot lower now than when I bought it, it doesn't matter. For me, I'm uh, looking at the long, long term. What was your motivation and what do you see as the value of Bitcoin? I think in the long term for my pension. I think a Bitcoin could fall to 15,000 to 20,000 mm -hmm. and I think it will then go up to 100,000. But who am I to speculate <laughs> on these things? I did it for my pension. For me, it's a long term investment. Mm -hmm. I don't see this in the short term. And I think there is, with a limited amount of Bitcoin in the world, 20 million Bitcoin, in time, it will be a store of value. But right now, there needs to be a far more of an education process mm -hmm. about Ethereum, about Bitcoin, and there also needs to be the rough from the smooth. There's a lot of um, speculative currencies out there, which I think are spivvy, mm -hmm. and therefore we need to be dis uh, differentiating between quality and the mass which are out there, which are just going off for speculative gain. Yeah, that's true. And did you buy it uh, directly via exchange, or did you use I did. Uh, I did it through a regulated exchange, absolutely. Binance. Ah, uh, yeah. okay. Right. Nice. <laughs> Good <laughs> stuff. They, they had actually some issues with UK authorities. Well, they did. They, they did indeed. And they've actually now been very, uh, I think in all these exchanges, they've got to be proactive rather than mm -hmm. reactive. And I think lessons have been learned from Binance and they have now, I think, reached an accord with the regulators where they understand where they're both coming coming from. It was a lack of communication um, and it was taken out of perspective, but I think there needs to be joined up thinking between the regulators, the exchange and everyone so we can create a store of value, provide accountability, provide transparency and we can then move forward about embracing all these different currencies in our various worlds. And how do you generally see the development of uh, crypto fintech ecosystem in the UK? I think there again, it's going to take time. It's going to be an education process. Um, I do believe that it has a future. Mm -hmm. um, there are many of those who think it's just a blip and it's just uh, a Ponzi scheme. Mm -hmm. I don't take that view. Uh, and, and certainly, you know, having on our uh, having on our panel one of the members of the House of Commons who's very involved in this whole process, we're looking to work proactively with banks and other institutions to try and create an element of respectability, transparency, accountability, and get this whole system regulated. The sooner we regulate, the better. Yeah, I agree with you. Thank you for interesting conversation. Not at all. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet and you. Good luck in the UK, Ukraine. Thank right. you. Cheerio.